Hey everyone, it's Anthony from Pretty Pretty here. In today's video, I'll be continuing to talk about Flask WTF. And in particular, I'll be talking about how to validate forms and how to show the errors from the validation if there are any errors. So before I get into that, just know that I have courses up on prettyprinted.com. I have both free courses and premium courses. So if you're interested in learning Flask in a more structured way, check out prettyprinted.com. So to motivate the validators, I have my form here and I'll submit it. And I see that I have blank for both the username and password. But in a real form, we wouldn't want something like that to happen. We would want these fields to be required because presumably any app you have is going to require both the username and password. So to do this, we use validators. So it's born imports from WT forms. So from WT forms, in this case, dot validators, I'm going to import some validators. So here's a list of the built-in validators. I see data required, email equal to, input required, and a few others. And the one I want to use right now is input required. So I'll import that, import required. And then in my form for each input, what I'll do is I'll add a list of validators. So here I'll add validators equals this list and the list will include every single validator that I'm interested in. So I'll have input required here and I'll call the function. So now if I save this and I run the app again and then I hit submit, it doesn't work the same way. So what's going on? What's going on is the form is failing the validation here and because it fails the validation here, it doesn't return the username is blank, the password is blank. Instead, it returns render template form.html again. Well, that's great, but how do I know where I messed up? I mean, in this case, it's pretty obvious, but let's say one of the fields was required and the other one wasn't in a real form, kind of like this example. Then how will the user know exactly which field needs to be required? So to do that, you'll show the errors that are generated each time the form fails validation. So to do that, inside of your template, you can simply add a space where the errors were show for each field. So underneath the form username, I'll add uh, an unordered list and I'll close it. And then I'll add a for loop here. So for something and then in for. So this something that I want to loop is the list of errors. So I'll say for error in form dot username dot errors. So you see the form dot username is the same, but then there's an extra list in there that has a list of errors. And what I'm going to do is I'll add, let's say a red list item. So color colon and then semicolon, and I'll simply display the error. And then I'll close this out. So I'll save that, and now I'll run it again, hit submit, and let's see what happens. Now it says this field is required, which is exactly what I want. So now I know that I can get away with having just a username and no password. So if I submit, I see the username is Anthony and the password is blank. So let me add the input required to the password as well. And then I'll add the error checking. So I'll add this underneath the password. I'll copy and paste. And then I'll change the username to password here. And then I'll load the form. I'll say Submit, and then it tells me both fields are required. It's pretty ugly. Oh, I forgot the UL. So let's take a look now. If I hit submit again. Yeah, so now I see that this field is required for both. Well, what if I wanted to have a custom message? Then I can just add into the constructor because looking at the documentation for input required, it takes in a single parameter message. So I add that. So message is going to be a username is required. And let's see if I can get away without specifying message because this is the only parameter I believe. So I'll say password is required. 
So now I'll try my form again and I'll submit with nothing. And I see a username is required and then I see password is required. And since yeah, message is the only one, I can remove it and then do this again. So that's pretty simple. So now your user has feedback on when they don't enter anything. But input required isn't the only validator that you can use. There are a few. So let's try length. And length takes in a minimum, a maximum, and a message. So I'll import length. And let's say the length of the username has to be between 5 and 10. Probably wouldn't have that on a real app, but let's just pretend. So min is five, max is 10, and message is, must be between five and 10. Five and 10 characters. So I'll save that, and then I'll go back, and I'll type in a username that's four characters, just the word four, and then I'll submit. And now I see it must be between five and 10 characters. If I add one more letter and then try this again, it's now valid. So the length validator is pretty easy to deal with. Uh, let's take a look at some other ones. There's a number range. So if you're dealing with a number field, you can use that one. URL, I U I D any of, So I think the next one I'll try is any of. So what I'll do is I'll import any of, I believe it's a capital O. And it takes in a list of valid inputs. So let's add that to my password and I'll say any of, and then the password, oops, the password needs to be, so values, let's say password or secret. And I did that list wrong, so I'll take out two of the brackets there. There we go. So now I'll run the app again, and it didn't crash with that syntax error, so I'll try this. So username, I'll have Anthony, which is between five and 10, and password, I'll put something else. So let's say just random characters. And invalid value must be one of password secret, which is a nice default message, so I won't change that. Um, obviously, if this were a real password field, you wouldn't want to have any of, but this is just an example. So if I add password as my password, or let's say secret, and hit submit, then I see both my username and then the password is secret and we know that the form has been successfully validated. So one last thing in this video before I end it is just know about the form validate on submit. So this one works whenever someone submits a form. So if you have a post request in this route, then it will check and see if a post request has been submitted and if the form is valid. But you don't have to have it set up to where a post request was submitted first, you can just change it to form.validate, and then it will validate the form regardless of if a post request was submitted or not. And typically you would only use this one if you are dealing with a route that only accepts post requests just to save on some typing. But if you have a route that has both get and post requests, then you wanna do validate on submit. That way it works for both the case when they're trying to get the form and the case when they're trying to submit the form. So that's it for this video. Uh, if you want to get courses, like I said at the beginning, just check out prettyprinted.com. I have both free and premium courses. Um, as far as this video goes, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. And if you have any questions or comments about the video, just leave them down in the description below. So or in the comments below. And in the description, I'll put a link to the validators documentation and a link to the code. So if you enjoy this video, I hope you watch my other videos. Well, thanks for watching.